Hello to you all and, and welcome to this series of discussions around the aesthetics of res res resistance in the arts. Uh, this is a series of discussions that we're starting today and which will unfold then tomorrow on Saturday and then Sunday. Uh, my name is Laura Capel. I'm a sociologist, journalist and the New York Times theatre critic in Paris. Um, I'm very happy to be moderating this conversation with Milo Rao, Edouard Louis and Geoffroy de la Gannerie. So over three days, we will try and explore first um, how activism and artistic practice can be intertwined today and how activism has shaped their, under their understanding of art. Uh, also, what strategies each of them has put in place to bridge the gap between the art world and their progressive beliefs. Um, and finally, what forms socially engaged art might take today. So on each day, we will spend 45 minutes together and I hope you'll be joining us as we Hopefully, continue this conversation and bring it to an end on Sunday. Now, I think Milo Hao needs no introduction here since he founded this School of Resistance that we're a part of this week. Uh, many of his works are being shown every night as part of the program, so I recommend catching the Congo Tribunal today at 7 p.m. Uh, but let me say a few words about our other two speakers today. Uh, First of all, Edouard Louis uh, is a French writer who has achieved international recognition with his sociologically informed explorations of his background and experiences. Now, these include The End of Eddie, History of Violence, and Who Killed My Father. He is currently working on a new project with Milo Rao, and I know, I think, they will tell us a little more about it over the course of these conversations. Um, and finally, Geoffroy de la Gannerie is a French philosopher and sociologist who has written extensively about culture, politics, and criminal justice from the perspective of social science in books including The Art of Revolt and Judge and Punish for the ones that you can find in translation. There are many more in French for French speakers among the audience. Uh, now, in this first discussion, we're going to be focusing uh, on the genealogy of activism, that is, what is a, so a socially engaged artist? What might that look like? And what that has looked like throughout history, um, as well as how uh, each of the speaker's work has been shaped by their own trajectory, their own sort of coming of age as activists, so to speak. Uh, now to start with each of you, uh, if perhaps anyone can start, but this is a question for all of you. Um, how do you each relate to the history of activism within the arts? Are there specific movements, specific periods of, of figures that have contributed to your understanding of it? Middle, you should go I first. don't know who will shall I, shall, I, shall I start? Uh, uh, yes, thank you. So thank you, Laura, for this beautiful introduction and, uh, and that you are ready to moderate us. And thanks, Edouard and, and Chauffeur, that you are here for three days. So I think, I mean, there are, uh, let's say, biographical accidents that make you an activist and that make you an activist of that kind or, or that kind. I think for me, and this is, uh, let's say, more my biographical background, there were some moments in my youth that brought me in a certain direction, let's say, perhaps even in a kind of, in a, in a, in a classical uh, direction of activism that was that the second husband of my, of my mother was a Trotskyist. So even in Switzerland that, uh, that exists, uh, obviously. And he was introducing me, I remember I was 11 years old and he was telling me, Milo, listen, Lenin is the most interesting and important figure of the, of the century. So we were still in the 20th century. And uh, I started reading him and I started reading Marx and then I started to understand that there seems to be underlying structures that are kind of um, 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 programming us to react in that way or in that way and these structures can to be changed and even only if we change these structures of how we live together, the structures of language and the structures of practices and perhaps the structures of the classes we can change whatever. So that all this is determined. And I think that was for me a, a, super, important, uh, a super important influence very, very early. Then 89, end of, uh, end of, of uh, real existing uh, communism. Uh, I was 12, 2, 13. I studied Russian to read uh, Lenin in the, in, the, in, the, in the original version. And uh, I continued kind of preparing myself to become a sociologist. And I remember it was 94 and then 97 when I went for the first time to Chiapas. And this was for me the first movement that really from close I could understand how, for example, an upheaval uh, functions, 
how you can use the internet, what they were the first one, the first big international movement that used the internet to, to be visible somehow and to give symbolic power to people that didn't have a big army, for example. So this influenced me a lot. So just fast, I think these are the two, three movements that made me understand. And later I was, of course, Bourdieu was very important for me as an influence. And then I started to work as an activist. And uh, perhaps as a last uh, comment on this, my first works as a, as a, as a director were not in theatre. I started in, uh, in, in, as a journalist and in, in television, but even before, I was organizing <laughs> big demonstrations for the socialist youth in Switzerland, in Zurich and in Geneva. And there the question was, from what point to what point you would go in the city? What is written on the banners? At what moment joins watch movement together that in the end, how you organize a kind of, of an afternoon of speeches, when comes the music, etc. So this was for me, let's say, the, the first artistic approach or where I saw that I can kind of model uh, the social body somehow as a, as a, as a director, a kind of a director when I, was, when I was 20 years old. So that's how it started for me. Now, Milo, you mentioned Pierre Bourdieu, and I know he is, of course, a French sociologist, for those who may not know. He's a major influence on all three of you, um, and I know Geoffroy has written extensively about his work um, in his own books. Perhaps, Geoffroy, you can tell us a little bit more about how your own social consciousness was, was awakened in your life. Man hört ihn nicht. Geoffroy? Can you don't hear me? Yeah, now we hear you. you now we hear you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, hello, everybody, and very happy to be to be here with uh, with you all. Um, I would perhaps uh, question your question by by saying that it's always very hard uh, and problematic the fact that we always uh, call activists people who are leftist, in fact, and uh, we have a tendency mm -hmm. in the social mm -hmm. world to depoliticize the right or the conservative, and you always ask someone who is in favor of social justice, of racial mm -hmm. justice, of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the right for women. They are activists, so why are you activists? But if you do pure art or if you do something that is just the reproduction of the institutionalized way of doing aesthetics, people will not ask you why are you a conservative activist or how did you become conservative or why are you an activist of the social order. And, not, and so I think it's very, very important to not to to um, to, to, to reserve or, or, to, or to use only the term activist for people who are in favor of the transformation of the world. And everyone is activist as soon as he creates. If you decide to create something, you engage yourself, you commit yourself uh, into a, pr uh, a practice that tends to, to address uh, social cultural structures. You can uh, confront them, you can uh, uh, um, uh, uh, aggravate them, you can uh, transform them and so on. And so as soon as you, you, you appear in the public space, as as soon as you publish something, you write something, you create something, you are an activist. And everyone is an activist. Uh, I am, Milo is, um, uh, Pascal Dussapin is, uh, everyone is an activist, as he is an activist of a, um, an idea of the world or of an, a, a conservation of a transformation of the world. So I, I would very, very uh, question the, the, the notion that um, uh, 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 we have to explain why we are activists as if uh, the other we are not. And uh, I, I always say that uh, for me, it's not, um, uh, I always, uh, regarding myself, I always say that the, being a, a leftist activist is not something that is explainable. It's something that is given into the world. You just have to, to be born into the world and to see, uh, I don't know, people, homeless people sleeping in the streets, uh, masculine domination, rape, wars, uh, imperialism, colonialism, and so on. Uh, as soon as you look at the world as it is, uh, you, you, you cannot be in favor of the, the, the perpetuation of the world. So in fact, in my uh, theory, uh, the left, it's, it's, uh, it's something that is given. Uh, by the world. You, if you look at the world, you want to transform it. And in fact, it's impossible to explain that it's uh, it's given as uh, the simple fact of being in the world makes you uh, aware of inequalities, of domination, of structural domination and so on. And so what should be explained, in fact, is why people are not leftists. How do you explain that some people <laughs> are not in favor of the transformation of the world and can want and want uh, the, the world to continue as it is and not to transform it. So I think it's always um, a good uh, way for me to say that uh, it's not possible to explain how you become a leftist. It's, it's normal. You, you have to explain why people are not leftists. 
So we're going to go with left-wing activism then. So to be clear in this discussion, uh, and perhaps Edouard now, I know of course you've written extensively about how you came to understand uh, concepts like class and domination, but perhaps for people who may not have read your works, how would you summarize that trajectory for you? Yeah, I mean, what I think it, um, is interesting is that um, uh, Milo and Geoffroy and me, we, we arrived more or less at the same moment. We create a theater, philosophy, literature, doesn't really matter. We create right after the 20th century, you know, and the 20th century was a very rich uh, moment of connection for historical um, um, uh, reasons, for sociological reason, for uh, different reason. It was a very, very rich uh, moment in terms of connection between uh, arts and politics. Uh, with people like uh, Franz Fanon, with people like uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, with people like with people like Simone de Beauvoir, and predom predominantly it was a it was a moment of of, of committed uh, literature, what we call committed arts, uh, art engagé, uh, philosophy engagé, théâtre engagé, théâtre politique, and and all those kinds of things. And I think that the question for us was uh, how to push that boundaries uh, even further and how to kind of recreate and reinvent uh, those things. And I think uh, uh, Milo with the neorealism and with his like um, activist theatres that we, he will talk about uh, later, uh, um, Geoffroy with his uh, oppositional theory and what I try to think as confrontational literature is like three very similar movements of kind of trying to reinvent the links between between arts and 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 between politics. My point was that the the, the to say that the, the committed art of, of of Simone de Beauvoir and Jean Paul Sartre, uh, mostly, but of other people too, was an art that consisted in in showing reality. You know, Jean Paul Sartre said, uh, "Committed art it was shows us a reality." present us the reality, for example, the life of women, the life of prostitutes, the life of black people, the life of gay people, etc. And from then on, from this fact of like showing a reality, people will be free to act uh, or not to act. My point, which is similar at some point with Didier, uh, with uh, Geoffroy and, uh, and, and with Milo, uh, is that I think we, in the, in the moment we live, we know reality, you know, we have access to reality. It's not like when Zola was showing up was what was going on in the mind of, of the workers. It's not when Jean-Paul Sartre was showing what, is, what was going on around us uh, in other parts of the world and everything. We live in a moment where people have the internet, where people have access to information, where people have a, like a massive access to media. And so people know how bad the world is. People know how racist the world is. People, people know how tough and heavy the masculine domination is, how like um, uh, LGBT people are being treated all around the world. And so for me, the question is not anymore to show the reality, if we know that reality, but how can we push people uh, to act uh, against a reality that they already know? And that they want, they, they don't really want to know, you know, except for several ex ex exceptions. I think that that art and, and theories, they don't really have anything to teach us anymore. We don't have, we, we don't, we don't learn anymore for, from, from those kind of things, from, from those reality. So the question is when you create, how do you push people to really, to really, to really act? Um, because, because the rest of the time, they, there is a problem with the sound uh, because most of the time people refuse to be confronted to what they to what they already know if you're in france you know that if you are black or you, if you are arab you will be put in a suburb and you will be arrested by the police and you will be more poor than the others most of the time and that you won't have access to the same thing than the others everybody knows that if you're a woman now you are uh, subjected to masculine domination everybody knows those reality so for me the, the question is when you when you write a book, when you make a piece of art, how do you make in order to to force people to confront to be confronted to those things that, that, that they know? And for me, this is what I call the move from uh, engaged literature, committed literature, to confrontational literature, and to confront to confront people with with with, with that knowledge. And I think it is it is really a way of like finding new tools. 
finding new literary forms, finding new ways of theater that will, that will completely, you, you know, push people to be those natural activists that, that Geoffroy de la Gannerie just talked about. And, uh, you know, when, 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 when a woman or when someone, most, most of the time a woman, uh, testifies about rape and people say, it's not true, it cannot be true, you know, it's like the first reaction all, all the time, it's like it cannot be true, it cannot be real, it didn't happen. And the fact that the reaction is so quick is because people, they, they already know that it exists, you know, and they want to fight against that knowledge. They know that there are sexual violence, they know that there are sexual assaults, they know what is going on, and there is not even room for surprise. They don't even say, ah, what happened? They say, no, it's not true. And the reason why the reaction is so fast in denying is because people already know the reality, and they're already prepared to protect themselves from a reality they already know, but they don't want to face. And for me, the role of art the role, the role of theory, the role of philosophy, and the role of, the, of, of philosophy is to kind of overcome and challenge this, this problem in our times, and that's now, what I, I try to do. Now, Milo, perhaps you'd like to react to that, and especially to the notion of reality, because of course, realism and neorealism are key concepts for you in your work. How do you relate to that in a slightly different way than Edouard, or do you sort of agree with his notion of confrontational art? No, it, I, I think I, I can I can I can add to it because I, I completely agree mm -hmm. to what what uh, what Chauffra said, but also to what Edouard said that uh, we are going from something that is engaged and would show and give a place to voices that are not heard, etc. You know all these modern cliches, or it already became a cliche, and to somebody who as a, as an artist or an activist or however you you want to to call it create a space where things can realize themselves. So not represent, but the representation, as I say in the Gantt Manifesto, becomes itself real. The, for me, activism or realism is to connect knowledge and a space of action. So doing and knowing somehow, to bring it together in a space of a, of a, of a project, for example. When we did, the, I, can, I can give the example of the last film we did, and uh, I was very happy or unhappy that uh, Edouard Joffre didn't play the roles as Roman soldiers as I proposed, but perhaps ne next time. <laughs> um, so the, the new gospel we did in South Italy, where uh, I had a, a Cameroon activist as Jesus, and not only to give somebody a place to do, to make a statement in a film, but really to make a revolt of dignity. And the film tells how we try while doing a film to make a real revolt. So really to land, to realize the, the gospel into today, not only by showing, okay, there are uh, all these conditions and uh, the criminalization of the refugees, etc., etc., but really through the project struggle and try to change it. And even the failure is included. And even the pressure that the little group is described in, in the New Testament, that Jesus is denied by his own group. It's not actually the police in the end of the day who makes him fall. It's the social pressure that makes the social activist group explode somehow. It's perhaps the narcissism of Jesus, etc. So describing, uh, I, I call it actually utopian documentarism. It's like creating a situation giving a cadrage to reality by art that this reality can become fiction somehow and something can happen that wasn't foreseen. And of course it goes into two directions. When we are here in the School of Resistance, for me, uh, when we are enclosed, let's say, in the, in the total presence of neoliberalism without future and without past, and the presence is mediatized all the time and we hear the same stories of the past, somehow again and again is try to take a myth from the past, bring it to the present to produce something new for the future. It's kind of mixing time together. That's what realism is. And I, I, one more uh, comment I want to do, uh, because uh, uh, Edouard uh, used the word neorealism, neorealism. Uh, I somehow quote sometime, let's say, the classical neorealism uh, uh, methodology of, for example, editing film. When you look like uh, how, how Pasolini did his films, it's very interesting. Because, for example, he deconstructs the dramaturgical space. You don't have over-shoulder shots. 
You don't know in which relation Jesus is to the apostle. You don't even understand if they are in the same room. Or he shots on somebody who is listening and you don't see what he is listening to because you see everything that you can understand that he listens in the face of this person. And this kind of deconstructing, not telling the story again, but deconstructing the story and putting the different elements of this story in a room that they are free again and can connect in many new ways. And I think there are many positive and negative uh, aesthetical levels as a realistic writer, because normally in the, in the common sense, realism means that somebody just writes down what, 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 what happened to him, no? That's all autobiographical mm -hmm. writing. But actually it's the relation, uh, it's the understanding and real, uh, realization of all the possibilities that lie in this situation you kind of condensed as being a subject in that world. And then you see that you are many things. And I think that's what for me is, is interesting by being realistic to realize things that were not foreseen or that they were forgotten or they were not, uh, uh, they were not logical in a normal strategy or there's a kind of a, a luxury in a normal way of telling the story that you would say, you don't need this figure and this figure. Uh, as a last comment, our Jesus film is the first Jesus film, I think, where Jesus is only like 20 to 30% in the image. <laughs> Normally you have at least 80% Jesus and then a kind of little, little things around. We have a lot of things you don't need actually in a, in a Jesus film. You can, you, can, you can tell Jesus film much more economically. And uh, that's, that's, that's all what I'm interested in when I say I try to activate rea reality and not only describe it. Now, I think we're getting to, to, to the questions of the, the traditions that you each that you are each in dialogue with. In a sense, you've already mentioned some. And I was wondering if perhaps Geoffroy would like to expand on that, on what your own path was and what traditions you believe that you are speaking to and perhaps taking to the 21st century as you're working uh, as a philosopher and sociologist. So no sound for we can't we can't hear you. Okay. So the tradition of the people without a voice. Okay. Um, no, I um, I think it's very obvious that we have uh, and I have and Edouard and Milo too a very special relation to sociology and especially to the work of Pierre Bourdieu. I think for me it's one of the most important thinkers. And often when I say uh, we have to think about the world, we have to think about reality, uh, I think that the, the, one of the major um, uh, piece of work that helps us to see uh, the reality is uh, the sociology of, uh, of Pierre Bourdieu. So um, I, I have a, more and more a problem with uh, thinking uh, uh, in terms of a tradition. I don't know. I, I'm not sure it's a, it's a, it's it's my way of thinking of what I try to to do. I think it's important to 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 reflect about an author as as someone who tries to inaugurate uh, new ways of uh, thinking. And in that sense, what is important is less the tradition, but the, 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 the new traditions we tend to create. And for example, the relation with uh, Didier and uh, Edward, the relation with Milo, with Thomas Ostermeyer, with uh, um, uh, etc. It's a kind of a new way of being linked with uh, artists, uh, writers, theoreticians, uh, in a, uh, that is, uh, I think, quite new. But I want to address what uh, Milo said about reality. Uh, and his film about the, the, the new gospel, which uh, we we loved uh, uh, very much. And I think that uh, um, there is a, always for me a, a, a tension uh, about the, 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 the art, artistic project and the notion of uh, reality, which is to say that uh, I think it's very hard to 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 how to say to to to. Um, 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 to, to legitimate an artistic project by the, the will to show reality. Because uh, if you want to, to think about the reality of, uh, of uh, domination exploitation, you have to think about history, you have to think about statistics, you have to think about, uh, um, I don't know, uh, uh, time and certain so, so incorporation. And uh, in that sense, uh, I, th I think that if you want to, to, to show 
and to uh, understand reality, you are much more engaged in a, a sociological or theoretical project than in an artistic project. And for example, if you think about the new gospel, and it's very important, the idea that an artistic project was the, the linked to a, a real protest movement and in, in, in a sense was uh, 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 one of the ways in which uh, a strike and a, a social movement was developed. Uh, one question I would ask is, uh, uh, can't you argue that the, the artistic project um, uh, would uh, have um, uh, forbid you to uh, uh, help more the movement. You know what I mean? Not only that the, the art was a, a tool for contestation or to struggle together, but uh, didn't you sometimes experiment the possibility that to be engaged in an artistic project uh, could have um, uh, uh, been a kind of uh, um, uh, um, not helped uh, the, 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 the strike or the, 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 the the struggle together, but uh, have imposed some constraints that may have um, forbid the movement to be more powerful, or, or you know what I mean. So, uh, uh, at what moment is uh, the, the is it possible to to articulate uh, um, authentically an artistic project and a political uh, activism? And at which point, if sometimes uh, it's not uh, in most in, more in contradiction than in a kind of articulation. So I don't know if I'm clear, but, you I, know... I, 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 uh, I, can, uh, I, can, I can answer to it. I think there are two sides of it. So one side is, of course, the negativity I think art always introduces in everything that uh, is described. So it's, it's yeah. uh, you know, it's always, for me, making art is, is always, has a, a perhaps dangerous uh, deconstructive element all in it. And you see it in the, in the new gospel that, and it was also what, when we had the first uh, presentation of the film in Venice, that some of the activists were a bit unhappy about it. For example, all this making of this fail or this, this kind of scenes that were interrupted because it was not, you know, this mix that art introduces in the field of, of reality and in the field of politics, yeah. because I think politics, classical politics, want to tell a straight story. Going to a name and there is, I don't know, the new law or the houses or, or whatever, uh, a better system. And art introduces all the failure that is uh, necessary to be, yeah, to reflect all the different perspectives you can have on, on this kind of project. Yes. And for me, the Bible, I have to say, was a very good, the New Testament was a very good example for me. Because when you look closely to the Bible as the central propagandistic book of the Middle East, uh, Western civilization of the last 2000 years, I would have forbidden it from the beginning on, because as propaganda, it's completely deconstructive. So you have told the story from six different angles. You have uh, a leader that fails. You have a, a kind of even a, a methodology of, of, of failure. You have somebody who is narcissistic at moments. You see all the problems of leadership. You see all the problems of a little activist group. And in the very end, I mean, the, the, the basic problem is uh, that even the Messiah is not the first one. He's baptized by somebody. Somebody was even before, and when he dies, because he is God, he is asking, but God, why did you have forsaken me? So it even asks the existence of God. And this is the propagandistic book of the <laughs> Christian civilization, you know. And I think that's very interesting. And here you see for me, and that's why I was so interested in this book and in, let's say, old texts too, that show how you try to construct a, a kind of a, of a strong story that would lead you to transcendency or lead you to the, the kingdom of God, but at the same time, you introduce everything that makes it completely impossible. Let's say the failures of humanity. And for me, that's a moment. And I think in the end of the day, you find yourself with, uh, with, your, with your comrades in it, that uh, you somehow accept your own uh, weaknesses. So I think you call it also shame, that you are honest on what you do and you show what you do. And uh, for me, this is kind of the meta-activism. This is the beauty of, 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 of activism, this kind of, of failure. On the other hand, and this is very practical, um, of course, the multiplication of the image, uh, a strike leader being Jesus in European cinema, etc., etc., this helps a lot to these people 
in, in, in terms of, of, of visibility, in terms of another way of telling a story, in another parallel world, which is perhaps the art house movie world. So this is, this is, this is a kind of a, of, a, of a very simple support, but it's a very, it's a very complex way how you... I mean, if you do it in an honest way and you're not just painting the, the affiche of, of, of Stalin in the end of the day, you know, but if you are doing in a, in a kind of a present day's way, it's a, it's a very difficult and contradictory thing to do. Edouard, would you perhaps like to react to that, perhaps from your, from your perspective as a writer, to the question that Jofra asked? Yes, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with Joffre on this. And uh, the thing is, we, we all agree on, uh, on one thing, which is that uh, representation is not enough anymore. And that representation is old fashioned. And that there was um, a kind of, um, uh, a kind of too easy things to do in saying, we're going to represent something and it will change something. And, and we are trying to push those borders. And when what Milo is doing is for me really revolutionary from that point of view to create a movie uh, like the Jesus movie or to create a play that would change the reality at the moment he is creating the play to do a play that will create a social movement at the moment he's creating the play as moment he's shooting he's saying okay to the people we are going to create a social movement and this will be the play and for me this is really something uh, completely new and radically new and uh, and that kind of push those limits of arts uh, that Joffre was was mentioning, but on the other way, I think that there is a um, a specific way that that art with, with which art can 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 change people and and can change reality. And when we when we think in terms of like political change and social change and transformation, we always think. Uh, in terms of like uh, collective and big groups suddenly being transformed, you know, with the social movement, with people going in the street, with people protesting in the streets. But also for me, the power and perhaps the beauty of art is its, po its possibility to change a collective that doesn't know that it exists as a collective, you know? Mm -hmm. And how many women were changed in reading Simone de Beauvoir, alone in the bedroom, alone in the sofa, alone, you know, in the park, reading the second sex from Simone de Beauvoir and understanding this is, this is my life. This is the oppression I'm, I'm going through. This is the oppression I'm living. How many like uh, black people who were enduring racism read uh, France Fanon or uh, read the writings of the, of the Black Panther Party and say, this is my situation. This is my situation of oppression. And in fact, for me, the, 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 the power of art is already here in, in the way change so many individuals, one after the other, and at the end create a kind of, of silent and almost invisible collective movement, movement but which is a collective, you know? And when, when Jean-Paul Sartre was talking about politics, he always made a division between serialized individuals, so like individuals, individuals in series, one after the other and not connected. Mm -hmm. And he was asking the question, how can we go from serialized individual to a, a group into fusion? And a lot of the politics nowadays is still be um, a frame in the same way. Uh, you know, like you have individuals and you have groups. And in fact, I think that art is really blurring these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many pieces of art failed to completely change the class system, failed to change the masculine domination, failed to change the, 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 the sexual uh, uh, violence. But in fact, the, 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 the capacity of the books to, to change the individuals is something deeply, yeah, deeply transformative and deeply collective. And I, I you know, as a gay child, as a gay teenager, when I come out of the closet, and when I wanted to be uh, a different person, when I wanted to break free from my family, to watch the movies of Pedro Almodovar or to read the books of Violette Le Duc or to, read, to see the movies of Gus Vincent, you know, was a way of completely, you know, liberating myself and changing myself. And OK, after the movie of Gus Vincent or, or the books of Violette Le Duc, there were no people demonstrating in the street. But also, every time now I go to a bookstore, every now, every time I have a, a public conversation, I realize that this personal revolution was a collective revolution. 
And I think when we, ter when we think about the limits of art and the limits of its ability and of its capacity to change reality, it's also because we always tend to forget this, this very special, specifical power of a body changing, uh, a, a body when it's reading a book, a body when it's going to the theater, a body when it's listening to a song. And, 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 and yes, it's, um, it's, 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 it's not, we cannot think about politics the same way we think about arts, because even when arts is politics, it's a different kind of politics, clearly. And, and this is what makes it rich, because we can do both at the same time, because we can write book and we can go demonstrate in the street at, the, at another moment. And uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's really what I, I think we should try to understand. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe Geoffroy had something to add, because I saw a raised finger. <laughs> I totally agree with Edouard, but I am very, very, uh, um, uh, um, um, I note that uh, every, almost all the examples he takes at the beginning, which is Simone de Beauvoir, Franz Fanon, Black Panther Party, is not art, it's a theory. <laughs> it's precisely uh, <laughs> uh, the opposite of art. And I think it's, yes, it's true. <laughs> you, you it's also sound that. But I think that in terms of, uh, if you want to be aware of yourself, to learn something about yourself, to understand what we are, what produces you, I don't think that you can have emotion writing a movie. But at the end, if you want to think of art as, uh, or, or you think about what kind of practice can help people to understand what they are and what they want to do to change uh, what they are, what they are submitted to, at the end, you need a project that is explicit about the social structures, a project that will address uh, their conscience about uh, uh, their ability to learn something about themselves, about history and so on. And at the end, this uh, logic of, uh, of demonstration, of demonstration, mm -hmm. of uh, explicit um, is what theory tends to do, or literature, a kind of literature like Le Duc, which is a very specific kind of literature, not fictional literature. And this is in opposition to uh, almost the, the, the entire uh, ideology that is at the core of the artistic field today, which is based on enigmatization, of not telling what you tell, of uh, being uh, uh, implicit, uh, of, uh, of hiding uh, the apparatus of your, of your work and so on. And so, in fact, uh, if we if we don't want to, I think that when we think about the, the, the cultural world, we don't have to, 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 our project should not be to save what exists, but to, to depart from a political project and then to interrogate what form would be the best to achieve this project. And we have to be, to think in terms of effic efficiency, of utilitarianism, uh, what will help me to do what I want to do. And if uh, what Edward says is absolutely right, uh, I think as a, um, uh, uh, you are engaged in a, a criticism of almost 99% uh, of what is produced as art or theater of literature today. And to uh, think that uh, it's a, a, a another way of writing, of uh, uh, doing lectures, conference, and so on, uh, that you are to do, which is based on the notion of, uh, of theoretical, of explicitation, of monstration, of uh, history, uh, social structures, and so on. And uh, um, so that's why I think it's... It, 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 it it engages us in a, in interrogating why people continue to do art uh, uh, if they want to change the world because they know that there are other possibilities to change the world that art that are much more uh, efficient which like theory or activism in the streets or you know political parties but I was very struck that Edward took an uh, example from theory and not from art. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Now, Milo, now, Milo, perhaps, what, what do you make of that difference? Because, of course, you make art, but you've also written theoretical texts, so to speak, about your practice and about what you do as an, as an activist, as an yeah. artist. So what would you, how do you react to that? Yeah, I think perhaps that's for, for our next discussion. But I think to, mm. what, what we started to do now is to divide somehow, and uh, I can understand it, theoretics and practices. So, like, what you describe and what you would do. And I think in the in the real world, I know it's 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 really not like this. I was I was very impressed by what what uh, it was said uh, that by reading a text from somebody else who is completely separate from you, you understand that you are a part of a collective you didn't know before you were not reading this text, and you become part of a collective or of a possible solidarity, and by this of a possible struggle to normalize 
that this solidarity exists as, I don't know, a law for women or, uh, let's say, an institution that you could create. And there, for me, art comes into the game because, I mean, I am also as kind of a scholar of, of Bourdieu, knowing that every normalized social pra practicing is in the beginning an invention of somebody, of a group, perhaps of a group that is in power, perhaps of a group that wanted to liberate themselves, but it turned around in another way. So, for example, the creation of a parliament, which we did in the General Assembly, or the creation of an international economical tribunal, we did in the Congo Tribunal, because we said, why is this not existing? Why do we have a global society, a global economy, but we don't have a global law? That's, by the way, the discussion we will have directly after. And this is an artistic intervention or intellectual intervention if art is on the side of theory somehow, you know? But when you then see that when you frame reality by theory or by a book or by a film, then you let emerge something that is social practice. That is a solidarity, a possible normalization of this solidarity, again, in the institution, for example. So I think for me... It's closely connected this, let's say, uh, creativity, social creativity, and on the other hand, a kind of the institutional history of past creativity that became uh, a law or whatever. So for me, this is really, that's why you can read an old book and through a book of, I don't know, Tolstoy or even the Bible, through this book, you can understand that you are part of a collective. And this book was written... 2,000 years ago. I don't have even to write it, you know? And this is for me the strange thing how, let's say, we are kind of putting down possible practices in texts, in institutions, in, uh, in, in, in theory. And I, I have to confess that for me also the, the, the most important uh, texts are theoretical texts. And I think most of the people, if you would ask, which text was, and even for me, I mean, Edouard, you will, you will, of course, criticize me and say it's not true, but also for me, your texts are, in a big extent, theoretical texts for me. And perhaps you can talk next I time agree. about it, <laughs> that you come, you go, <laughs> you, you go with realism to a point that it becomes, in a way, I don't know, a methodology on looking on, on, on reality that you would use it not only for this, let's say, a bit story that you tell, but you can then tell a lot of stories in that way and perhaps your own story. And that liberates you and that yeah. theory, you know, yeah. like a kind of a rhetorics that you would understand. For me, Pasolini, his Jesus film is fucking boring. You know, it's not a good film, but the methodology he uses, the humanism, the way how, again, how he makes the cadrage, he has no overshoulder, all these ca kind of things... He decentralizes the story of Jesus. He brings it to the miserabilism and invented miserabilism and archaism of South Italy and so on. So this is extreme. It shows me who I am and who I can be. And this is, this is what is interesting for me, but not what Jesus says or how Enrique Razzocchi plays or, you know, that's not the liberating point. I don't even have an idea who these people are. And I think this is the kind of going on a meta level by being the most concrete possible, what art normally does, realistic mm -hmm. art. That's for me what, what it is all about. So, Edouard, please hold that thought until tomorrow because we're going to have to stop this conversation yeah. for now. Uh, it's a very packed schedule today for the School of Resistance. Uh, so we will be back. We will be back tomorrow to continue the, the discussion at 4 p.m. if you want to join us. And in the meantime, at 5 p.m., so in about 15 minutes, I think you're going to have a conversation about transnational injustice, which I I'm sure you will want to follow. Um, thank you so much for listening and being with us today. Uh, we hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you. Edouard. See you tomorrow. <laughs> See you Thank you, Laura. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Thank wherever you, you are. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs>